Welcome to the Startup Grind. So I guess one of the reasons that we're here is 43 North. If you don't know, I don't know what's wrong with you. <laughs> Raise the roof, Jess. <laughs> Speak louder? All right. 43 North is $5 million. We're giving it away on Thursday. Free tickets. I think they still have free tickets. You should get one. Uh, you know, they're really putting Buffalo on the map. They're bringing in a lot of very high-powered judges. And you should check that out. You can watch out. Uh, also, if you missed Startup Weekend, it's nice to see a, a lot of Startup Weekend faces. Startup Weekend was last weekend. One of the first entrepreneur events in Buffalo, John Spitz, Dan Megasevsky, Steve Poland, uh, and others put that on. And, you know, it's just, it's a great way to keep that community uh, growing. A couple other uh, quick announcements. Working for Downtown is having an event next Wednesday. Uh, and it's focused on high-tech entrepreneur startups in Buffalo. It's free, it's $10 if you want a lunch. Uh, check that out, I think there's a link on a Gotham Studio site, if not Buffalo, working for downtown. November 17th, Algonquin Studios is hosting Growth Hacking. So for any startup, it's, vit it's vital that you're continually getting users, and they're gonna teach you how to do that. Um, Syracuse, D, Tony, thank you guys for coming out. They, they, made, <laughs> they made the trip for the Buffalo Chicken Wings, so. But seriously, they're doing great things, uh, connecting Buffalo and Syracuse. Sponsors, I'm gonna run them out real quick, sorry. All right, now I got it. <laughs> so the sponsors, 43 North, Hodge is the law firm in Buffalo. St Buffalo Startup Weekend is helping out Buffalo Startup Scramble, so we appreciate that. Entrepreneurs, helping entrepreneurs. Uh, UBCEL, Harris Local Government, Algonquin Studios, VCamp, a little teaser earlier, you're gonna learn more about VCamp shortly. The Becky and Styler, another law firm special in, in intellectual property. Uh, Infotech, Peter Sumino. Others here, Culligan Law, Magic Palki, big supporter. Grandmother, they, every Friday, or the last Friday of the month, FICA Buffalo, uh, you should check out their Facebook group. It's Grassroots Entrepreneurs, and heads up display, Mr. Woo! Clark Dever. Woo! Oh, yeah! Uh, also, thank you all for being here. Sorry that we changed venues and speakers. Rohini Center, sincerest apologies. Uh, we will be rescheduling Rohini for 2015. Uh, and it was kind of funny, she called me and she was very apologetic. Her company just got purchased by a company in London, if you didn't know. And their first board meeting is right now in London. So she, she called, she's like, I'm so sorry, I can't make it. Um, I'm gonna call this company, I'll see if they can move the board meeting to the next day and you know, I said, Thank you, but you know, you, you're an entrepreneur that just had their company bought. You're, uh, you take care of that first. But she will be back, and that's gonna be a great event. So look for that in uh, 2015. All right, now we're gonna get started with a fireside chat. Once again, thank you all for being here. Uh, let's hear some noise. Let's hear some energy. 43 North Finals Week, Buffalo Startup Scramble. We're gonna bring Steve Kernan up to the stage. Let's hear it for him. That was really cool. Thank you so much. Can we do that one more time? That really was awesome. Oh, yeah. Can everybody hear this yeah. okay? Yeah, you're good. Follow the mic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Steve, uh, some of the people here know you, some of the people don't. Let's do a quick who are you and what do you do on the most macro level, and then we'll go a little bit deeper. Okay. Um, 
So, uh, Dr. Steve Kieran II, I'm the president of Algonquin Studios. Uh, there are, uh, that ownership group and the, the management group over the course of almost 17 years now has started about 10 organizations. Uh, I'm involved in some capacity in, in eight of those today. I'm a microphone tamer as well. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, so I'm, I'm an executive, I'm an entrepreneur, we've started a bunch of businesses. Um, I, I am the smallest time of small investors uh, and, and really interested in growing that, that side of my life. Um, and uh, um, me and, and, and the team of people who, who we've started a bunch of companies with, we're just, you know, we're so thrilled about what's happening in Buffalo and what's happening you know, inside our four walls, and, and, uh, and I appreciate the opportunity to come here and talk tonight about you know sort of the genesis of studios. Don't you do that? And the genesis of, of our accelerator that we're going to start up uh, next year called called B Camp. So you know, hopefully we can get into some some of that. Steve, do you want to talk a little bit about the early days of Ogden Studios and also the early days in? Buffalo and what it was like to be a tech company back then. Sure. Um, so, so Algonquin Studios was started in, in 1998, um, which in, in, in kind of the technology scene, I guess, uh, makes us, um, what's the nice way to say that, Dave, way in the back there? Uh, really old. Really old. <laughs> seasoned. You're a veteran. We're seasoned. We're seasoned. I'll, I'll, I'll take that. Um, you know, so 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 it, it, it started in '98. It, it was started by three guys: uh, Dave Thimicky, Adrian Roselli, both of whom who are here with me tonight, and, and Steve Rains. And uh, you know, I think they can get into some of the some of the drivers there. But you know, at the time, kind of combining studios and, and the local tech scene, there was not a ton going on. And and the tech scene was that was sort of this vacuum sound that you heard of people being sucked out of Buffalo and in. <laughs> See how I did that, right? And, and and into you know New York and Boston and the West Coast and, and places like that. And these guys got together and they said, well, well, geez, how do I really? I'm feeling badly about this. Um, how do we create an opportunity for for the people we know and the people we love to? I'm getting hand signals in the back. Is that better? You just you, you yell, at, you yell at me sooner next time. Can you turn the volume down on the mic? Is there any volume? Is there a volume button on the mic? No. No. And how are we now? Good? I apologize. Okay. So, um, the thing about the early days at Algonquin Studios was this. I promise I won't, I won't spend too much more time on this particular answer. You would show up on Monday and, you know, feast or famine, right? We had more to do than hours in the day to do it. And then the very next day, you'd swear that we were positioning ourselves to be professional video game players. You know, and, and we were really good. I mean, we were really, really good at, at Unreal Tournament. Um, and as, a, as a matter of fact, uh, if, if you were to look at any of the uh, job postings that we put online for a number of years, everyone ended the same. It said, if I recall, it said, uh, they we're looking for someone with the ability to handle a redeemer in close quarters. And I don't know if we have any Unreal Tournament people here, but a lot of folks used to look at that and say, you know, yeah, I'm familiar with that interview technique. It, it, a, a redeemer is the biggest gun you can get in Unreal Tournament, and we really, if we were going to go pro, we really wanted people that knew what the hell they were doing. Um, so that's what we sort of threw on the uh, threw on the application. But uh, you know, day to day, uh, the first year I think we made ninety thousand dollars. I guess that's my cue to stop. Ninety thousand dollars in, in in revenue. The second year, none of the founders took a paycheck. We bootstrapped the hell out of the whole business, and uh, uh, you know, I think I think worked really hard. So. How did you transition from that startup video game playing, uh, no paycheck having stage to the established tech company that you are today? Uh, 
Well, I, you know, I, I don't think any of us can take credit for the passage of time, but certainly there, there, there's a lot of power in, in uh, perseverance, right? And uh, the thing that I'll say is that, you know, very, very early on we, we, we lucked out because we had a really great mentor and advisor that was, that was uh, part of our team. He, he just so happened to be our CEO. Um, he, and, he, and he was my, my dad, uh, Steve Kiernan Sr. Um, his background was, was in professional consulting. He started his career at, at Ernst & Winnie. And uh, my whole life, you know, all I saw was him create company after company after company and run them uh, you know, pretty successfully. And I think he took a bunch of um, young people and taught them about you know, policy and procedure. And, and he taught us a lot about things that maybe we didn't need that day, but he knew that we would need in, in, in a year, in two years, in three years. And I think he set us up nicely for sustainability. And, uh, you know, when we started, it, it wasn't, you know, a VC would laugh us out of the room. We, you know, we weren't, we weren't in it for hockey stick growth. We, we were in it to provide a sustainable platform for, for Buffalo, for ourselves, for our family. And, uh, and, and you know, thankfully we've done a really good job, I, I think, of doing that. Hey. Can we just use this one mic? I can just talk loudly. Yeah, yeah, turn it on. Is this mic on? Turn the other one off. Can we turn these two off? Can we use this one? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry about this. Studios today. What is Algonquin Studios uh, look like on a day-to-day -day operation? You want me to use this one, or do you want me to use this one? Choice B. Good. Okay. So, um, who, who are we today? What? Well. I, I hope that we're at some level the, the same, the same company that we were in 1998. You know, because I think we started for all the right reasons. Um, you know, the the why is different today. You know, when we started, we were early 20s. Uh, we weren't married. We we didn't have families. We didn't have houses, um, and we played a lot of video games, right? Um, you know, we did good work, but but you know, we had a lot of fun, and. Today, um, among many other things, um, you've seen the movie Cinderella Man? Has anybody seen the movie Cinderella Man? Yeah. It, so there, there's a wonderful scene in Cinderella Man when he's being interviewed sort of in his second go around, when after he's worked on the docks and, and, and that left hook is, is just killer now. And the reporter says, so what's the difference between now and then? And do you remember what his answer was? His answer was, because now I know what I'm fighting for milk and he was talking about he was talking about all the values in his life that had changed and you know we're still a young company we're still a bunch of 40s and 30s and sprinkling a few 20s but we've got families and we've got these responsibilities and it's very magical sounding up here I wish you could experience this in the same way I am <laughs> I need. I, uh, hello? Hello? I'm just going to talk until you turn it down. I need Che Hawk up here to help me understand how to do this because I understand this is what you do. Okay, how are we? All right. So, so anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, who are we today? <laughs> um, you know, the, 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 the what is different. Uh, we, we've narrowed our focus. We're heavy into healthcare and health IT as an organization. Um, we, you know, we chose technology as an industry, and, you know, technology changes every seven and a half seconds. So we have to you know, change and, and keep up with that. But, uh, you know, fundamentally, I hope that we're, we're the same company, um, you know, building a sustainable, 
long-term uh, set of opportunities here in Buffalo. So Algonquin Studios is involved in a lot of different things. How do you not miss out on an opportunity, but kind of stay true uh, to yourself as a company and focus on your core values so that you'll be successful? Uh, I guess, how do you avoid spreading yourself too thin when you're in that startup phase? So, uh, so, so, so some brut brutal honesty is that for years we were really, really bad at this. I mean, we, we really sucked at this big time. Um, we fell in love with a lot of different ideas, uh, our own and other ideas that we heard. And uh, I was reading an interview one time that, uh, that Richard Branson gave. Somebody was asking Richard Branson, listen, what, what you know, love him or hate him, <laughs> I'm not gonna start that debate, but he said, um, somebody asked him, what advice would you give to an entrepreneur? And his response was, um, very early on in an entrepreneur's career, I would grab them and tell them to find people who are better than you at running the day-to-day -day operations of your business, because you think differently. There's a reason that you're an entrepreneur. There's a reason that you've decided to go the path that you've gone. And if you can capitalize on that, you can always think strategically about where you're gonna go. But you, you're not gonna do very well if you've got one foot on land and one foot at sea. You're, you're neither gonna be a sailor or a pioneer if you do that. And one of the things that we've been able to do at studios is grow a really good team. We've got a small team, but we've got a really good team. And as a result, we as an ownership group and as a senior management group have been able to have, have different folks engage the community in different ways. You know, for example, Dave Thimicky is here tonight. He's one of the founders and, and you know, Dave, uh, there are weeks at a time where I forget what that man looks like because he is literally out in the community talking to everybody about what's going on and how can we help and who can we connect you with. And What's nice today versus years ago is that you know, our business continues to run and we have sort of developed this, call it uh, an investment thesis or hypothesis or strategy for the ideas that we think we can help further. And uh, you know, thankfully we're getting better and better at that. One thing that I've heard uh, from numerous people in Buffalo is Buffalo kind of has a reputation of uh, being risk adverse especially when it comes to business. Uh, I don't know if it's Buffalo's history or, or culture or, or what, but I've heard that a number of times. So do you think that Buffalo has this attitude of risk aversion? And you know, if so, what can we do to try to change that? Or do we need to change it? Is it a good thing? Like a lot of things, you know, you, you can look through multiple lenses and arrive at answers that sound totally different, but I think that are both correct. You know, that's that's the that's the trouble with politics. I think, right? Um, speaking from the standpoint of Algonquin Studios, I, I would say um, I want to make sure that they're not sponsoring. Um, so uh, very early on. One of the things that we, I told you that we bootstrapped our company and, and we, we have never accepted even one penny of investment from outside our four walls. You know, we, we, we've gone into debt to finance our Algonquin Studios operations. Very early on, Algonquin Studios benefited a great deal from uh, M&T Bank. You know, uh, before, before the dot-com bubble and before the, the housing market collapsed, um, believe it or not, uh, you know, I think we, we leveraged relationships even more so than you know, underwriting models and uh, found some creative and aggressive people at the bank to help us out. And without them, we, we, we wouldn't be here today. Um, you know, so, so that's our story. Um, what I hear over and over and over again as, as we meet with entrepreneurs in the community is that there is capital to deploy and for a variety of reasons that capital is not being deployed as, as much as certainly those entrepreneurs would like. Um, and, and, and I think that that simply speaks to the entire ecosystem and the level of risk still uh, in, in the ventures that, that, that we're growing here. And the good news is I think that we're already on a course to change that. And 
and uh, I, I think we'll see more and more of that open up. So I, I think some of it's there, but I, I do think it's getting better. Good. Switching gears a little bit, you touched on VCAMP, but I kind of want to bring the focus to VCAMP because uh, I think it's really exciting. So in your own words, what is VCAMP? That was, a, that was a really awesome segue from that last one into, into VCAMP. So, um, so I may have mentioned that earlier I thought maybe we were on a course to change some of this risk. And um, this is as if Evan dug into my brain and pulled this one out. So VCAMP. Uh, VCAMP is uh, a technology accelerator that uh, we are launching in 2015. And uh, our focus is very early stage companies and what I would say ideas. Ideas that have not yet been formed as companies. Um, we've, based on our background, we've got a real preference for uh, software in healthcare and health IT, but fundamentally we're technology folks. Um, you know, we've got companies that are software as a service, we've got companies that are um, systems design, we've got infrastructure companies inside healthcare. We've, we've got breadth and depth in healthcare that I think make this accelerator a really good fit for you know, focusing on, on healthcare, but there's also the technology piece. Um, the goal of VCAMP is going to be to take ideas and companies that need to be validated, right? So if, if you've read, if you've read uh, The Lean Startup uh, or anything by uh, Steve Blank, you know, you've read about these, these lean startup principles, and it's something we believe wholeheartedly in because it's something that we have violated in the past and have lived the experience of doing it differently. And in some of our other ventures, we've followed these things to the T, and we've, we've sort of created our own spin on some of, some of how you practice that. And um, uh, you want to hear more? Uh, am I running out of time? <laughs> Maybe touch on what lean startup uh, means to uh, people that might not know. Sure, sure. So, uh, so, 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 um, lean lean startup is all about validation. So, so there's this whole you know build, measure, learn cycle, which is don't don't be the smartest person in the room and sink a lot of heads down time into building exactly what you think the world needs. Go out and validate that idea. You know. The idea behind VCAMP is that we're going to work with teams to develop these critical path strategies to get to validation, to get to paying customers. And at the end of that chain, the hope is that um, if, if we can graduate a bunch of companies that uh, have proven the value and growth models that they come to the table with, you've presented a lower risk investment opportunity and validated the value and growth model for either an investor that might be looking to make a, a seed investment or a bank who's gonna make a decision about you know, offering you debt financing. So why did Algonquin Studios decide to pursue this technology accelerator uh, instead of you know, just focusing on what Algonquin Studios has been doing and has been improving on? So when we first started, we, we've been in the Brisbane building downtown since uh, early 99. And when we first opened our offices, we actually incubated other companies. So that whole incubation process and sort of um, co-working with other companies has been part of what makes us us since 1999. And as our business began to, to grow and we needed space and we needed resources, that's something that we did less and less. And um, yeah, uh, allow me to fast forward many, 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 many years. Um, you know, earlier I, I mentioned somebody who was part of our team was a great advisor and, and, he, and he was also our, our CEO and, and he was my dad. And uh, um, in 2010, he, he was diagnosed with cancer and, uh, and, and we lost him in 2012. And uh, I, I, don't, I, I didn't bring it up because I want a rain cloud hanging over this event. This is a really cool event. I, I bring it up because when, when that happens, we went through this fast-paced um, succession planning. And all of a sudden, all the founders in the company had to do very different things on Tuesday than we did on Monday. And 
what happened was we stopped interacting with the community and we stopped looking outside of our four walls for help. And we sort of built up these walls and said, yeah, we can figure out all this stuff. But our world's changed quite a bit and uh, the company was not doing very well. So we got together as an archery team and we said, you know, guys, we have to be committed to, to doing something very different here. Um, and in, in one meeting in particular, we said, listen, we're, we're going to plug into the community, we're going to re-engage, we're going to go see what's happening out in Buffalo because we haven't done it in a long time. And, and what we found was, was totally amazing. Things that everybody in this room already knows about, but we weren't hip to. You know, we, we were sort of living in our four walls and doing our own thing. And we, we didn't realize what, what was out here. And as we continued to engage in the community, people would come up to us and say, hey guys, can you spend some time with me and tell me about you know customer acquisition? Can you spend some time and tell me about infrastructure issues? Can, can, can you tell me about all of these different things? And we're looking around at each other going, well, when, when did that happen? And we, we realized that we had, a, we had a real story to tell, that we had, we had actually been in the trenches many, many, many times on many different levels, and uh, we had something to give back. So we had sort of been acting this way for a long time, and as, as we met the different folks in the community and we saw what organizations had popped up, um, you know, we realized, Peter Semino was in my office the other day and he said, he said uh, one of the most powerful things that I've, that I've seen in Buffalo in the last you know, year is that all people need is the forum. You know, this community exists and people want to break out and they want to do more and they want to connect. And you know, this, this is our way of being part of that ecosystem. So. Who should apply to VCAMP, and if I'm accepted to VCAMP, what can I expect while I'm there? Well, uh, as I said earlier, uh, our, our focus is very early stage companies. Can you move over there? Can you move over the other side? Because you sound great, but then when you talk, about just switch seats. How's that? It's worth a try. It's worth a try. Okay. All right. Hey, Evan, can you repeat the question? Who should apply to VCAMP? What can I expect on that VCAMP? VCAMP is looking for very early stage companies, companies that have not yet participated in, an, in a seed round, and individuals and teams who have ideas that they want validated. And, and again, I would say that our preference, because of our experience, is based in healthcare and health IT. Um, but you know, we're very excited about technology and software companies, and I think there's a lot that we can offer there. Now, there's this concept of, of, of money and, and smart money. And, I think that we can be really smart money and a smart experience for companies that have ideas in, in healthcare and health IT. So, um, the application, uh, the application process will be online. I can take a hint. Um, so the application process will be online. Uh, we're gonna run our first class in the second half of 2015. Our first event is actually coming up in November, November 17th, we're running a, we're running a growth hacking seminar from uh, Aaron Goddard, at, uh, from the CTO from GiveGap. And we're gonna be doing more and more and more of those leading up to our, our second half 2015 uh, first class. Um, when you're there, uh, it, this, this is intended to be a mentor-driven and community-driven accelerator. So we've started, uh, we've started recruiting investors, uh, entrepreneurs, executives from our own network in the healthcare sector. And, you know, again, when we reached out into this community and we, and we saw what was here, uh, we saw what people had already built. It was, it was so clear to us that that had to be a part of what we're doing. So, you know, our, our hope is that what you'll do is, is, is um, interact with those organizations, you know, interact through the events that we have, um, you know, 
again, f focusing on, on interactions with mentors and then working with the coaching team to develop strategies to accelerate your path to paying customers. Um, we envision right now that the program is going to be four to five months long. Um, and uh, let's see, what is the, the application process will be up uh, first quarter of, of next year. Why wouldn't I just apply to be an accelerator in a you know, traditional tech city like Palo Alto or Boulder or someplace like that? First of all, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I mean, you know, if if, uh, if if you're sitting there with an opportunity to go to 500 startups and Y Combinator, what, you know, Y Combinator or uh, TechStars or AngelPad or any of those guys, and, and I found out that you didn't go, I'd call you crazy. So, you know, those programs are world-class programs because they've got a history of success at this point in time. You know, uh, journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step, right? And wouldn't it be fabulous to have a technology accelerator um, right here in Buffalo doing those same kinds of things so I, I think I think that this community the entire entrepreneurial community is really focused on um, growing eyeballs in Buffalo and growing the success story that is Buffalo and I think by participating in VCAMP um, you know you have an opportunity to directly impact that story so you know it's it's, it's also about giving back to the community It's often been said that for a successful startup, you need an idea, a product, a team, and execution. So what do you think is most important for those, or um, can, you t can you touch on that a little bit? Sorry, I didn't mean to get in your face, I was just trying to, I, I, I'm, so, I'm so sorry about this. I'll, I'll take the look from wherever I can get it, I appreciate it. Um, so, so uh, ideas versus products versus teams versus execution. Uh, yeah. So, so, um, so, so that's an interesting one, and and I think based on based on all the organizations we've started in our experience, the answer to that really depends on on, on where you are um, in the life cycle of that organization. You know, th th there there is an adage that you know. Um, ideas are only multipliers of execution, and I believe in that wholeheartedly. You know, I, I think that if 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 you can execute on an okay idea, you, you know, you probably have a good win. If you can execute on a world class idea, you know, you're you're one of those hockey stick stories that VCs make lots and lots and lots of money on. And good for you. Um, I think product is clearly important, but I don't think it's the first thing. Uh, in my opinion is that it's not the first thing, and, and, and I'll tell you why I think that. Um, not long ago, I was reading an article that asked the question about all the organizations who go into accelerators. And this article focused on Techstars, 500 startups, and Y Combinator, just as you know, three marquee organizations. And the question was this, when you graduate, what percentage of people are working on the same product than, than uh, uh, the idea or product that they pitched to be accepted into the program? And does anybody have any idea what that number was? Shout it out. 50%. Less than 50%, less than 50% of the time, that was kind of a middle of the road guess, by the way. I mean, you know, that, that was that was rather non-committal. But you know, Price is right. You, you win. So uh, less than fifty percent of the time were, were companies working on the same thing that they were accepted for. Just think about that for a second. You're talking about five hundred startups, Y Combinator and TechStars. Wouldn't you like to be accepted into a program like that? And these groups are making decisions about you. But clearly, after you've been accepted more than 50% of the time, what you pitched has changed. It's different. What does that tell you about knowing the product first? What it tells us is that validation is really, really, really important. 
and that you should expect your product to change, and, and that's okay. There's, there's still a lot of value there. So, um, to shorten the answer, which I had a hard time doing clearly, I think team is really critical because, especially early on, you know, understanding that team and understanding what drive that team has and what that team can do is is probably the most telling thing. Um, maybe the only thing that you can really tell about you know, a, a group that you're talking to. So, I think team is is critical. Mm -hmm. tell them to keep trying because I, I think that if, if you continue to do, you know, if, if you do the research, you'll find out that the best VCs in the world will be the first people to admit that they're wrong way more than they're right. Um, you, you know, I, I was just reading an article or, or an interview that Chris Saka gave not too long ago and, and he actually said, uh, you know, he said as it relates to VCs, we're wrong way more than we're right, but when we're right, we're really, really right. <laughs> and, 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 I, and I thought that was pretty cool. You know, he's like the most, he, he seems like the most down-to-earth billionaire I've ever not met. So, um, you know, don't give up. Because if, as an entrepreneur, your first inclination to somebody telling you you're crazy is to give up, then you're not much of an entrepreneur. Reminds me of something that Dan Penberg you said at the last startup grind. He said, "Entrepreneurs never give up." Uh, Here's, here's where I think we are. I think that we are, I think that for the first time in a long time, we are allowing ourselves to believe that our identity can be something different than the outside world has kind of beaten into our heads for a long time. You know, we've all traveled, right? And you're out someplace else and somebody finds out you're from Buffalo and it's the middle of summer and all somebody wants to talk about is how many feet of snow did you have to bury yourself out from underneath when you, you know, got in your car to drive to work or, you know, went, went to the bus or something. And it's like, you know, eventually that gets old at some level, but on another level, um, did anybody see the TED talk about Embrace the Shake? If you haven't seen it, TED, Embrace the Shake, check it out. It's, it's one of the most amazing presentations I've seen. So I would say embrace the snow. Who, who, who cares if the rest of the world thinks that we're covered in snow all the time? Um, but but I, I am really happy that for the first time in a long time, um, you know, we're, op we're optimistic, you know. I, I don't think that people outside of Buffalo think that we're optimistic. I think that they think that we're still in the seventh ring of hell, but we're not. And I, I think that I think that for the first time in a long time, we're optimistic. I'm, I'm very happy to be a part of that. For Agatha Studios, you mentioned to myself that you had traveled a lot. So, what are some things from other cities that Buffalo could adapt and that we could learn from? Did everybody hear that question? No. 
Okay, so the, so the question was, I've traveled a lot, and what are things that Buffalo can learn from that, that I've seen in other cities? And uh, yeah, this is a really interesting one because I, I, I do, and in, in all the ventures that we have, I, you know, I, I travel quite a bit. And uh, for years, you'd sort of, you know, you'd sort of play this hometown bingo game. You know, you'd go someplace else, and you'd see this cool thing, and this cool thing, and then this cool thing, and, this. and all of a sudden, you're like, oh, bingo! This town is awesome. You know, it's got all the things that I think are really, are really wonderful. Um, and in, in one of my most recent travels, I went to, uh, I went to Nashville, Tennessee. So Nashville, I think, is a really, really cool town. If you haven't been, I highly recommend it. Uh, it's way more than just music, but music is awesome. Their worst performer, I shouldn't say that. Their music is awesome. Um, our music is awesome, too. Their, their music is really good. Um, what really struck me about going to a place like Nashville is it's a really walkable city. You know, it's got, it's got great you know, college and university uh, areas. It's got great restaurants. It's got great entertainment. It's got great sports. And I come home. And I'm telling my wife all these awesome things about Nashville. And my wife, who just has to put up with my pro Buffalo stuff all the time, I am just, I mean, forever talking about how awesome Buffalo is. She looks at me and she says, she said, you know, yeah, but you said all the same things about Buffalo just yesterday. And it, it occurred to me, she, she, she's, she's right, you know. I went to Nashville and I talked about all the cranes I saw in this guy, and I talked about these cool breweries that I went to, and I talked about this cool tech corridor where we went and we met a bunch of people, and I talked about all the people on the street who took the time to talk to me, and I, took about, I talked about all of these things that I call Monday here in Buffalo. And, uh, and, and I think that's an important point. You know, I, I, I don't go to Chicago looking to redefine Buffalo. I go to Chicago because Chicago's great. I go to Tennessee and Nashville because Nashville's great. And I come home to Buffalo because Buffalo's great. Gay Buffalo. Yay, yay Syracuse. Yay Syracuse. Yay Rochester, if anybody is from, you know, I'm, I'm yay upstate. That's right. Who, who, Um, here's what we don't need to do. We, we don't need any silver bullets. You know, we, we all know the Bass Pro story, and, and, and we all know similar stories. We don't need any of that. You know, the thing about Buffalo is that we've got this great momentum. We've got a great attitude. We've got um, a belief that, that, you know, these things are happening. And if, if you're a naysayer, if you're still out there, and I, and I can't believe that anybody in this audience is, but um, you, you, you better hop on the bandwagon because you're, you're the one that's going to get left behind, not us. And it, it, it really is happening. And, uh, you know, I, I would say especially to a room like this room, you know, keep doing what you're doing. It's never been a better time to continue. And what you've done so far is so important. And the worst thing that could happen is to say, yeah, we're, we're not we're not quite there. Yeah, we're almost there, and we have to keep going. So, um, anybody watch the show uh, American Chopper? Any American Chopper fans? Am I the only one? That's embarrassing. So, American Chopper is a dad and a son, and they build these custom these custom chopper motorcycles. And 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 the dad says, you know how you lift more weights? You lift more weights. You know, it, it, there, there's, no, there's, there's no real trick to it. If you want to do it, you do it. So how do we continue? We just keep doing what we're doing. We, we don't overthink it. wings in the central business district um, and, and I would also lobby for more craft breweries um, and I love all the existing breweries that we have um, seriously what it needs is more startups um, big companies that contribute to the economy didn't start as big companies that contribute to the economy it takes creative, 
risk-seeking people who are willing to go there and to put it on the line. And, and you know, I'm talking to the right audience. This, this is us. This is who we are. And Buffalo needs more of that. Um, Silicon Valley Bank does this report every year for the past, I think, four years. And uh, last year, it, it, it did a survey of startup companies. And specifically, in 2013, 91% of technology startups indicated that they would plan to hire that year. 91% of technology startups had it in their budget to hire people. We are the economy. We are the engine that drives it. Not to take anything away from, from, from you know, all the players in the economy, but I think we have to focus uh, more and more and more on growing the ecosystem of startups and Buffalo needs more startups. So. If anybody has any questions, Dave, Adrian, I know we're going to I think, uh, to keep it short and sweet, um, The Hard Thing About Hard Things by Ben Horowitz is a, is a really, really um, good book about um, how this life as an entrepreneur is, is not always rose-colored and what it takes to make tough decisions when tough decisions are needed. So it, 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 it can be kind of a tough luck book, but it's it, it's 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 one that resonates with me a great deal. All right, guys. Sorry about the mic. Um, we do have a lot of other great events planned for Startup Scramble, three D printing. Um, Entrepreneur Mixers, Indie Arcade, uh, Kickstarter, uh, Buffalo Game Space had just rate, finished their Kickstarter. So I would definitely check that out. Once again, thank you guys for coming. And Steve, actually, one thing that you neglected to mention, which I don't know why, uh, about VCamp, you told me that you're going to have a bar there. So I feel like that would be a pretty big draw for any young entrepreneur. Uh, so I got you this. Startup Grind Hockey Puck Bottle ca Cap Opener made by my friend Dave Sheffield. So, helping the future generation of entrepreneurs find motivation. Uh, Steve's going to stick around, so if you had any questions, please find us afterwards. And thanks for coming, and go check out some of the other uh, Startup Grind events, Startup Scramble events. Thanks, guys.